Hello, I am Gary Brantner of Rentner Up Studios Comics, and this is the show where I talk about comic books I've read, where you can get those comic books, what's in my mailbox, and Campaign Corner, where I talk about everything cool that's on Kickstarter right now that I think you should know about and that inter interests me. Interests? Oh my gosh. So, on that note, uh, let's start with uh, a little about myself. I make a comic book called Peter Pan the Vampire, and you can find those on IndiePlanet.com. IndiePlanet is a website that sells uh, independent comic books, and they have three issues by me called Peter Pan the Vampire. So go to IndiePlanet.com and search for Gary Brantner or Peter Pan the Vampire, and you will find three issues that you can read of mine for free, uh, digitally downloaded, or you can buy the hard copies for $4 each. So, first up, I have a comment that was on my YouTube channel. And this is from Scott Lost. It says, thanks for the shout out, backing the project, and spreading the word, and listening to the podcast. He has his own podcast uh, called Making Comics on the Stitcher. And that's a whole lot of support. I truly appreciate it, Gary. So thanks, Scott Lost, and I do enjoy your show. I love uh, the tips that you guys have been given about Drawtober and uh, making comics and doing Kickstarters, so cool. Alright, so this is going to be a mega episode where, because I'm a little behind, uh, family things have come up, and um, I, we've had some car problems, and with teenagers that need to get to work, and school, and toddlers getting to school, all sorts of craziness, people getting to school. Uh, I've been unable to make an episode, so I am doing a serious catch-up episode because uh, if I hold off too long on any of these, I won't be able to mention their Kickstarters, and uh, and that would be sad because there are a lot of these comics that have good Kickstarters out. So I'm going to start with the ones that are ending more recently, or sooner, and this comic is called Tart Soul Searchers. Tart Issue 14 is currently on Kickstarter right now, and it is an awesome story. Uh, I love Tart, and Tart Soul Searchers here I got from uh, my comic shop, actually. Tart here is a Scout comic that you can go and ask your comic shop for. I have the trade for Tart 1, Volume 1, and it is awesome. I love it. It's crazy awesome, and I can't wait to get Volume 2 when the trade finally comes out. I will have my comic shop definitely order that one. So, Tart Soul Searchers 1 here is written by Kevin Joseph, illustrated by Ludovic Sally, lettered by DC Hopkins, and edited by Cassandra Bell. And, as I mentioned before, it is a Scout comic, so you can go to scoutcomics.com and find that, or you can ask your comic shop to pick it up for you. And one thing I love about uh, Tart here is that... Uh, Tart cycles between different art styles, but it's all from the same artist. Um, so I love how it goes from painted, watercolored, and all sorts of crazy awesome art to the next minute it could be, uh, let's see, let me find some here. And then it goes into animation style and uh, cartoony looking. Okay, focus. There it is. See? So it goes from uh, painted to cartoon in a flash, and it's crazy awesome the way that this story keeps going. Um, two different art styles, I bet it's really fun to draw that way. And then it flashes back to painting. So really cool stuff. So a uh, Tart is about uh, time traveling uh, girls that they, they go from uh, time to time and correct things they hunt monsters in these different times and uh, this one this issue uh, Tart Soul Searchers it touches on some uh, vampires in Roanoke and it was really cool to uh, see how they twisted the Roanoke thing into vampire hunting and all that fun stuff really cool stuff and yeah here's some watercolor check that out really awesome stuff so, yeah, uh, Tart, Tart is one of my favorite stories to read, and uh, I, love, I love the way that they uh, flip-flop between art styles and uh, the way they have different uh, 
characters like uh, Lemon and uh, Meringue, or Lemon and um, Tart and Strawberry, all all named after some kind of dessert and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, check out Tart on Kickstarter right now for issue 14. It's Tart the Wild Wild West. I will talk more about that later. But Tart 14 is on Kickstarter until December 13th. And yeah, like I said, I will mention that more when it gets to the uh, Kickstarter corner of my show. Which, yeah, Tart 14 is currently 159%-ish um, funded right now. Next, on to my what I have read recently is three comics that I all got all from the same place. Ooh, what is this? Ooh, prints. I'll show you show you some awesome prints first. If you can guess what that is before I even say what it is, that would be awesome. But so these prints and this comic is Dirty Work at the Crossroads. One, two, and three. Let me see here. I think they all have the same art team. Yep, they do. So that is really cool stuff. Um, all right. So art team for Dirty Work at the Crossroads is story by Joshua Metzger, art by Carlos Nito, and colors by Luis Antonio DeGaldo, lettered by Marco Della Verde, edits by Marcel Dupree, Logo by Ed Vallely and designs by Loris Ravina. So, Dirty Work at the Crossroads, 1, 2, and 3 here, are about a, a planet that was um, colonized a long time ago, and it was actually forgotten. It, the people that uh, sent them there to colonize the planet forgot them, and so they've been living, fending for themselves for centuries, decades, it's a very long time, who knows how long it is, and uh, they've actually started mutating and stuff, they've split off into factions, and uh, let's see here, where's my notes? So Sunday Childs is the main character, and she she has been living uh, on the other side of the law, kind of just doing odd and end jobs, whatever. So this is who we're seeing this world through is Sunday Childs, and she's had a rough life trying to get by. When we first meet her, meet her on a job, or she's overseeing a weapons trade of some kind, and it goes wrong. The police show up, and people are getting shot left and right, and she's actually the only survivor from this little uh, weapons trade that went wrong. And uh, so she ends up captured and scarred, and that. As you can see from the um, the cover here, they they display that scar right on her face. She was in a car accident trying to escape from the police, and she ends up captured and sentenced to be executed the very next morning in front of a crowd. So there's this whole crowd of prisoners. They're all going to be executed at the same time, and it's really cool stuff. Let me get show you some of the interiors here too, if I can find. Ooh, that's not a clean page some cool stuff to show you. So the artwork here, pretty cool stuff. And uh, yeah, the artwork and ooh, that's also not a clean, oh man, not clean pages. So um, anyway, it is adult themed. So if you are not uh, mature enough to read these comics, I do not recommend you checking these comics out. Oh yeah, there it goes. There's some super sweet art right there. Very cool. These weird looking griffin monster looking things that uh, kind of help them out. Stuff like that too. So, uh, she gets sentenced to be executed and another group that comes in to rescue one of their own that is also being executed. So they, she escapes with them and she ends up with, uh, okay, let me see what, and don't see. So she ends up with uh, a leader that they call the mother, and she injects cells into uh, into Sunday Childs that are going to mutate her if she doesn't accomplish uh, an assassination on Queen Maud, the the mother's opponent. 
in six, so she has 60 -ish hours to complete this and come back for the antidote, or she mutates into who knows what. And uh, it's pretty scary. So she she goes after this Queen Maud to assassinate her, and uh, she starts growing scales and stuff on her stomach and her arms, and it's pretty cool looking. And yeah, there's some cloning involved in these stories, which I'm always a sucker for clone stories. And uh, really cool stuff. So Kit... Kickstarter is doing, okay, so No Sleep Entertainment, that's who's doing this, is doing a Kickstarter right now for issue four, and I jumped on that so quick after reading this that, uh, yeah, I need to find out what's going on with these clones, find out what's going on with this uh, mutation antidote, if she succeeds in assassinating, or if she figures out a way out of it, who knows, and who knows what side she wants to be on. It's all really cool, exciting, and I want to find out what's going on. So check out Dirty Work at the Crossroads. Issue 4 is on Kickstarter right now. You can get all four issues, do the catch-up tier, all that fun stuff. It is 80% funded, so you need to jump on that as quick as you can. I did not write down a time of when it ends, but it's ending soon. I think it has five days to go as of when I'm recording this. And it's 80% funded, so uh, jump on there, get that other 20% up there so that I could get issue 4 and find out what's going on with these clones. And, uh, yeah. So, now, we are Skylight, we are Scarlet Twilight, and hey, look at that. They, they print for, through Kablam also, so that's pretty cool. Uh, I love Kablam, they do some awesome stuff. And yeah, obviously this book was freaking awesome. So we are Scar Scarlet Twilight right now. Uh, number two is on Kickstarter. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about we are Scarlet Twilight right here. Where's the credits? Oh my. The credits are not on page one. Okay. Shoot. This is weird. Where's the credits at? Are the credits on the last page? Oh my. Well, um... Gosh dang it, where are your credits at? I think this is done by a solo operation, one-man team like me. Oh, here we go. We are Scarlet Twilight. And Captain Lancet, copyright, Benjamin Morse, 2021. So, yeah. Benjamin Morse is the entire team on this. He writes it, he colors it, he letters it, he does the whole shebang. That's pretty cool stuff. And there's the thank you page. Gary Brantner of Rentnarb Studios Comics is on that. They do um, the thank you page, he does, um, throughout the thing. It's on the first page. And it looks like uh, they throw it again on the fifth page, and you know, so on and so forth. Goes a couple pages, and they do it again. Really cool stuff. And the artwork in this is amazing. I love the style here. It's uh, it's done in a really old pulpy kind of style. Um, but then it also looks modern at the same time. Really cool stuff. We Are Scarlet Twilight is the story about... Uh, Captain Lancet, a superhero in the 30s. That's where the story starts. Our superhero in the 30s. And uh, not really sure what his powers are yet. Kind of alludes to that. So he's out fighting crime. And uh, our... Let's see. And uh, He goes up against a mad scientist. He's doing some stuff. The scientist traps him into a, a room and fills the room with gas and he uses his lancet rays because he's captain lancet to uh shoot the shoot the uh poisonous gas clouds and d diffuse the uh, poison so that he can jump up to where he is and fight him and oh man all of a sudden we are surprised and find out that cap captain lancet he keeps uh, repeatedly saying, hey, change your ways, and I will spare you, take you to jail, all this stuff. And the scientist, he says, I'm never going to change my ways. I'm evil, and evil's fun. Why would I ever give up being evil? 
And he says, oh, that's okay. Uh, I just wanted to know if you were redeemable or not. Since you're not redeemable, now I can reveal my true self to you. That these, these guns are just props. And uh, I'm actually a vampire. That's why your poisonous gas can't hurt me. And I was just pretending to shoot the gas with rays. And uh, since I'm a vampire, I'm invulnerable to it. And since you don't want to redeem yourself, I do need to eat. So, really cool. I love it. Um, yeah, as a person who also writes vampire comics, I'm always a sucker for vampire comics. Throw in some clones there and we'll have some awesome stuff. But, you know, that's just me. But, yeah. Clone stuff and awesomeness. Oh, is it going to clear up so you guys can see how awesome this artwork is? Come on, focus. Camera, focus. So, anyway, really awesome stuff. Man, that's some good stuff. Uh, awesome lettering, too. You, you did a bang-up job, uh, Morse. You did a, a bang-up job on all of this art, all of the, the whole comic book. And uh, I'm, I'm uh, right there with you on uh, funding backing issue two, which is over 200% backed right now. It ends on December 23rd. So check that stuff out. Good, good vampire story stuff going on. And so uh, we have this other lady who's doing rituals to summon a demon. Man, that's an awesome looking demon too. Very cool, uh, Kirby-esque looking, uh, even Watchmen looking kind of style to it. So I'm loving it. And then he, so the, this vampire, Captain Lancet, goes up against this uh, being that just got brought, brought through the blood ritual. And uh, so he goes up against it. And the uh, being forces him to go to sleep. And uh, he's like, he's fighting it, he's fighting it, and he goes, sleep. And then uh, Captain Lancet is woke up, and it's like, it's like the comic just turned into Spider-Man 2099. It's Captain Lancet in the far future. And so it's really cool to see what's going on. I can't wait to read issue two, which is on Kickstarter right now till December 23rd. It is already 200% funded, so I'm definitely getting my copy, and can't wait till I can read that one, let you know what I think of We Are Scarlet, Scarlet Twilight. That is in reference to the, um, the uh, cult that he is after in the comics. Oh, sorry. And uh, now, we are off onto another comic that I've read. So this, this one came with an awesome letter that says, Gary, thanks for supporting. Thanks, keep up the awesome indie comics com content and uh, really cool stuff. So yeah, this is the Saturn Effect Alpha. The, th the Saturn Effect Alpha, which, uh, look at that. Man, they do super glossy covers and uh, all that fun stuff. So, the Saturn Effect Alpha, this is issue two right here, is written by Chris Moses, art by Francesco Mazzoli, colored by Marco Tarambar D'Alessandro, logo by Winston Gombro, and lettered by Reed Hinckley Barnes. And, uh, so the Saturn Effect Alpha here, oh, that's not a clean page I could show you, has some super awesome artwork. It makes me think of um, Aeon Flux. Like, uh, kind of scratchy, cool looking, um, stretchy kind of characters. I, I don't know other way to describe it, but so these guys are on a planet. And uh, it's another one where they're on a planet and they are they're basically terraforming it and mining it for the rich. And uh, the people on the planet that are mining it and all that fun stuff are sick of working for the rich people. They're getting the bottom feed. They're not even being compensated that well. And, uh, and they're tired of it. They want, they want to be better. They want things to be better and all that fun stuff. And like I said, it's got some super killer art. So I, I love the sketchy kinetic energy art style to it. It goes really well with this story uh, of people that are stuck in a life of servitude mining this planet. And 
I, I really have no idea what the story, what's going on yet. Uh, it seems like there is a, a hero that's trying to make it better for them. And there's also uh, cops that are changing and wanting to make it better for the miners also. So, yeah, there's the rich and there's the mutants and they're forced to work. And there's a weird religion, which I'm not sure what's going on with that yet. So these people that are working to change things or, or get away and escape the planet. So, yeah, so much radness. I don't know what's going on yet. I, I can't wait to see what's going on next. Sadly, this, this comic is on Kickstarter right now for issue three. That's the next one. And they're doing two comics at the same time. They're doing Saturn Effect Alpha and Saturn Effect Helena. Both at the same time on Kickstarter right now, and it's only 60% funded. It ends on Christmas Day, December 25th, and it needs some help. Uh, get on there, back this project, help me get this, get more of this comic, because I really enjoy reading this comic, and I want to see the next issue. So jump on Kickstarter right now, check out Saturn Effect Alpha, issue 3, and Saturn Effect Helena, issue 1, on Kickstarter right now. Really cool stuff. It's a little bit wider than a comic book. That's one other thing that I love about it too. You don't have to stick to the standard size. Good stuff. Um, next up is a twofer here. Crossover Division 1 and 2 is on Kickstarter, is what I read, and it is on Kickstarter right now for issue 3. So check out Crossover Division and uh, yeah, I will start with some credits on this boy. Oh man, getting all confused here. So, Crossover Division. It's got some cool artwork. Uh, they do some... Whoa, okay. They do some awesome stuff. So basically, the Crossover Division here is a story about people that... Uh, they go around and it's like a Men in Black situation. I kind of... not sure if I already reviewed issue one, but anyway, I reread issue one and two here just now. So, credits. Let's find some credits here. Written by Will Allred. Art by Pablo Martine... Martine... oh man. Martinena. Okay. Pablo Martinena. Brent Fowler is the letterer. And James Powell is the editor. And there are alternate covers, but I have the main cover, which is by Pablo Martinena. Martinena. Yeah, Martinena. Anyway, uh, so yeah, that's a really cool cover. Check, I don't know if you see that really cool cover there. It's got the Brides of Dracula on it. And uh, the light here is not super stellar. So basically, uh, the crossover division is a group, to, they're an organization, kind of men in black, and they send out people. So apparently there's this phenomena that uh, people that are reading a book, um, they don't understand the power of the book. And if, if, uh, if their mind is strong enough and they're reading the, the book constantly enough, uh, they get lapsed into pulling the characters from the book into the real world and uh, the crossover division has to go out and stop these fictional characters from wreaking havoc on this on our world and uh, yeah so the first issue starts with um, it has some they have to deal with the aliens from War of the Worlds and they also go on another assignment where they have to save a little girl from the Wicked Witch of the West and now that I say that, I do think I've already reviewed this, but I'm not sure. So, I will move on to issue two, since I feel like I've already reviewed this one. So after they defeat the Wicked Witch of the West, the War of the Worlds and that, now on this new assignment, they, uh, they go up against Dracula, his three brides, and Renfield. So, it's pretty cool stuff, and, uh, yeah, they're fighting the Draculas and the Renfields. And uh, he goes to, he goes his first time going to the um, 
division, crossover division place where they organize and send out people on missions and that. And it's pretty cool. Um, he doesn't actually get a chance to get orientation or uh, training or anything because of this Dracula thing is going on right now. And there's no one else close to it. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah, it, I kind of get the feeling that um, these people that he meets in the crossover division are people that backed the comic and got drawn into the book. So that's kind of cool for those people to get drawn into the book. And uh, that stuff. So yeah, he goes out on the mission. And he, uh, these two guys, Hector and uh, Hank, end up fighting Dracula and the Brides. That's some cool artwork too. Really cool colorist. Really throws, makes the whole thing complete. And uh, so yeah, they go up against the Dracula and they read the last, basically they just show up and they read the last line of the book and it all goes away. They don't really have to kill Dracula or anything. They just read the last line of the book of whatever story they're up against and it goes away. But they have to be pretty knowledgeable of stories and stuff to be able to get that far, to be able to pull that off. So it's cool. I love it. It's, it's a really interesting way to do things like that. And uh, then we get some uh, back matter. A lot of all the variant covers are in the back. They got some really cool covers by some really cool people. And, stuff like that so yeah and uh, Hank was one of the members of this he was an ex-teacher so it's pretty cool all right let's see here oh yeah and this came with some bookmarks but I don't think we I've even met these characters in the story yet I think that might be Renfield right there and yeah but there's some bookmarks that came with it Stuff like that, and uh, oh yeah, my name on the thank you page, well, partial name. Instead of Gary Brantner of Rentnarb Studios Comics, it says Gary Brantner of Rentnarb Studio, but whatever, must not have been enough room for that. But cool stuff, I love it, and so there, there is a Kickstarter right now for issue 3, if you want to read that, and uh, I will talk more about that in the uh, campaign corner. I think they're going to be going up against uh, some Shakespearean characters soon. It is going to be uh, a 32 page book that will end on uh, December 29th. It is now 89% funded, so you need to jump on that. Check it out before it's too late. Crossover Division. Next up on my read, what I've read, is White Ash. So I have kind of a weird mix up here. I have White Ash 3 and 4 that I got from the comic shop, because you can, these come from Scout Comics, and I had the comic shop order me White Ash 3 and 4, and I also have uh, White Ash 5 that I got from Kickstarter. Super glossy cover, just like uh, Crossover Division and Saturn Effect Alpha. Really awesome. I love how glossy it is. Super cool looking, and it's got it's got a back cover, but it's exactly the same. Just uh, I don't know, what do they call that? Virgin cover without the uh, title on it and credits. Anyway, White Ash is one of my most favorite comics to read. Super awesome stuff, and uh, this is a uh, cat girl that works at the uh, garage with Alec, who is a dwarf. And the White Ash is always cool. It's about well, I should get to the credits before I say stuff like that, but... Uh, so, White Ash here is written by Charlie Stickney, art by Connor Hughes, letters by Connor Hughes, colors by Finn Cram, and this cover is by Connor Hughes and Finn Cram. So, White Ash, like I was saying, is the story of a dwarf named Alec who... His father just barely died, so that's what he's dealing with in this. And uh, his father just barely died, and he's being told that he's a dwarf. And so he's like, oh, so uh, most of the people in this town are dwarves and that? And he's like, no. Or his uncle's telling him, uh, no, there are a lot of dwarves, and there's also elves. You're, this girl that uh, Alec is interested in 
she's an elf, and uh, so elves and dwarves don't get along. There's actually kind of a racism against each other, and there's also a vampire. This, if you remember my reviews of the last uh, issues, they caught this vampire um, feeding off of uh, Cat, who works at the garage with Alec, and uh, the. The vampire forced her to cut her own fingers off, stuff like that. So yeah, th this is a really cool stuff. I love the art style, really playful. Uh, so they're kind of, it's been a couple months since the the whole showdown with the vampire and capturing him and everything. And uh, Alec has decided to stick around in town and he's going to be saving humans, which nobody seems to care about the humans, the dwarves or the elves. But he's like, well screw that, I'm 50% I'm human. My mother was a human, and my father was a dwarf, so I'm going to look out for the humans. And, uh, yeah, it's really cool. So, Lillian, she's sneaking out every night to uh, go hunting with him and stuff. And, uh, yeah, so it's really cool like that. And, um, anyway, I'm loving it, and uh, I got, yeah. So, there's a Kickstarter going on right now for um, an action figure of Lillian. And technically, there's not a Kickstarter for the figure yet. If you, we reach enough money on the goal, uh, then they'll unlock the availability of this Lillian figure. So, anyway, you only need uh, 6,000 more dollars to hit that goal, and then I can pick up the Lillian figure and a cover that looks just like the action figure. And then I can display those on my shelf here behind me and that would be really cool so anyway yeah Alec and Lillian they're get they seem to be getting closer but then Kat she wants to uh, she wants to ask Alec out and she finally works up the courage to confess her love to him and she actually goes to his house and she's gonna wait on the front porch but it starts snowing so she's like oh, screw this I'm going inside so she she uses a key from under his gnome to uh, get inside, and she sits sits in that um, in the warm house on a chair, waiting for him to come home. And uh, when he finally does come home, she's gonna she's like about to t confess her love to him and everything. And uh, right when he gets on the front porch, opens the door, somebody throws a bag over his head, and snatches him away before she before. He, Anybody even knows she's there. So she gets on a bike. That's what this front cover is based on. She gets on a bike and she tells whoever just kidnapped Alec. But it turns out to be uh, an initiation kind of thing. Uh, Alec's un uncles and friends from the mine are throwing him a big old party and they announce a surprise that uh, he is the king of the dwarves. And uh, that's probably going to come with a lot more obligations and whatnots. Um, there, White Ash is currently not going to be kickstarting the next uh, season, as they call it. They're going to be releasing it in comic shops only through Scout Comics, or you could go to scoutcomics.com and pick up issue six, and uh, which I think they're starting over again at issue one. So they're going to be starting that over again, um, and all that. I can't wait to read that, but I might wait until the trade that way, because I I've bought too many copies of uh, White Ash already. I've got the uh, single issues and the um, the uh, the hardback, so I'm gonna wait until the uh, volume two hardback comes out. But I really do want this Lillian figure to go up next to my comics, and that would be really cool to uh, display next to this one. And that, and I have another one which has her on it with an arrow, and she's upside down shooting and all that fun stuff. So yeah, so that's on Kickstarter right now. It's 190% funded. And uh, you could get the action figures. It's really cool. I will talk about that more when I get to the uh, Kickstarter corner of my show. And I will also talk about how I slept my way through college. It's from the same uh, creative team, Charlie Stigney and uh, whatnot. And so he's doing that. I'll talk about that more when we get to the Kickstarter corner. That's also 110% funded, so definitely going to be getting that. These came with this book that I just barely read and showed you. I've got a White Ash 
sticker. Oh, that's so cool. I love stickers, and they always go on the box. I even got a KK Gas. That's the uh, auto place where uh, Alec and Cat work. So KK Gas air freshener to go in the car. That's cool. And a white ash button, which I always take the... Uh, the pin off the back and super glue a magnet to it and they become awesome fridge magnets and I got an enamel pin which I love wearing these in my ties to church and date nights with my wife so there is an enamel pin of the Dwarf King so that's cool now that is the end of all my reviews this show's not over yet though now we're going on to the mailbox section Mailbox, mailbox, rent arms, mailbox. What did I get? So I've been getting a lot of stuff lately, obviously, because I haven't made an episode since November, I think. So here we go. This just came in the mail today. I've got Standstill 7 and 8. Really cool stuff. I kickstarted those. They only did a 14-day a, a um, campaign, so I didn't get a chance to talk about this one on my show at all because it came and went so fast so that's that <clears throat> Gosh dang it. and I also got oh man I dropped the pin I got an awesome comic called uh, for goodness sake this is a little story that's about a a dude that got cursed with he looks like a demon he's got red skin horns all that stuff and so we find out what's going on with him. This one came with two stickers and an awesome bookmark, which has uh, Rain on one side and Thatcher on the other side. Oh, it's not focusing. Come on, focus. Anyway, so I've got, I've got Rain on one side and Thatcher on the other side. That's a cool bookmark. So I, I will slap that in there so I don't lose them. And, you know I'm a big fan of enamel pins, like the King Dwarf one I just showed you. This one here is uh, Rain's Dog, so that one's cool. It's a big boy. And, uh, yeah, show you in comparison next to the White Ash guy. And then this little doggo. So that's cool. Um, that came with the, uh, for goodness sake, that just came in the mail. Uh, this came in the mail, Death Sentence. London. I think this is volume two of Death Sentence. So I still have Death Sentence volume one coming in the mail, but this will go in my read pile and I'll, I'll sort them out, make sure they're in the correct order then. And uh, oh yeah, this is one I just got in the mail also from Kickstarter. This is Super Scouts volume one. This is the whole uh, three issue series collected, plus an extra 22 pages, I think it was added into it and so I've already I just barely did the uh, review for issue three of this you could go back a couple episodes and find that so I really love this story this is a story about kind of a Power Ranger ish thing where uh, these guys these people were on a show and uh, they had suits they gave them powers and they fought crime on the show but then they find out from the producer who uh, made the show that it's real that it's based on real things, that they actually have powers and they're more than just a show, they're also, uh, they also have to fight these things. And so it's pretty cool they go up against an island and stuff, and the extra story in there and stuff, I already read this. I, since I already read the most of the volume, I decided to read those extra 20 pages, and I hurried up and read those. Really good stuff. Super awesome. and. Uh, I might as well do a review on that right now. So, Super Scouts here is written by Ryan Little, art by Bruno Oliveria, and uh, lettered by Nikki Powers, and edited by Cody Colombe. So, yeah, this has got some cool stuff. Check out this art style. It's really cool. Uh, it makes me think of uh, Rick Leonardi in his Spider-Man 2099 days. So it's kind of pretty cool that way. Um, or it makes me think of um, 
dang it, never mind, I can't remember his name. The guy who, he used to draw X-Factor way back in the day. Um, Strassman? Strowman? And so, so yeah, they, they find out that it's kind of like Galaxy Quest, where uh, they were on a show, Power Ranger-ish, and then they find out that it's at, this stuff is actually real. Their sensei was actually fighting aliens, and he just made a uh, a show out of his out of his uh, journals and stuff out of his memory of what he did so yeah and I'm on the thank you page here as Harlock and Rentnarb Studios because uh, I backed this one to give as a gift to my buddy um, and uh, Harlock is going to enjoy this I'm going to have to uh, give it to him this week so I won't be able to do another show where I mentioned this one that's why I decided to do it now so check out um, Super Scouts. I, I will have links to where you can find all this stuff that I've mentioned in red. Where you can find it and get it yourself. And I will have to pass that along to my buddy Harlock. Also what I got is uh, Berserker Solo Island Book 3. So this one's a really cool one. Uh, this is from the person who writes uh, Lovecraft P.I. This is about an island where in the uh, 30s, I think, where something mysterious is happening. I will tell you more about that when I review that. Slightly exaggerated came in the mail. This one's about an alien kind of uh, Indiana Jones woman. So she goes around tomb raiding in the space. Really good stuff. There is a Kickstarter right now from the same art team that I will talk about later. And that Kickstarter is called um, Majestic. So I will talk about that when I get to Kickstarter Corner. And here's one called Sex, Spies, and Rock and Roll that came in the mail. Lots of stickers with this one. Sex, Spies, and Rock and Roll. Super sexy cover. And uh, this one has an Indiegogo campaign for it right now. So if you like the looks of this, you might as well jump on that and get the uh, Indiegogo version, which is the exact same, just comes from a different place. And this one here, here's some stickers that came in the mail with magnets. So I got a bunch of these, a handful of these magnets. They stick together, they're magnetic and all that, but the stickers are really cool. A lot of fun little stickers. Yeah, love stickers. So that that came with the deadliest bouquet. So I can't wait to read that one. That will go in the read pile. Super sweet. Man, been getting some good stuff lately. My read pile's insane. And last but not least. Cult Heroes, I think this is issue three, what? Yep, this is Cult Heroes 2. So Cult Heroes 2, love that. Man, that's a really shiny cover. Super cool art style. Um, I love how gritty and uh, just an insane way of doing a comic book. I love it. So uh, more on that when I read that. That is the end of the mailbox section. Now we are on to the campaign corner. What is on Kickstarter and Indiegogo right now? All right, so what is on Kickstarter and Indiegogo right now? Let's talk about that. Tart, issue 14 is on Kickstarter right now until December 13th. Tart Acid in the Wild Wild West. A time-traveling demon hunter visits America Old West to start a new position within the Toxic Fruit Paranormal Investigations. So check out Talk, Tart 14 on Kickstarter right now. Tart Acid in the Wild Wild West is on Kickstarter until December 13th. Dirty Work at the Crossroads 4 is on Kickstarter right now. A post-apocalyptic tale of the outlaw Sunday Childs as she struggles to survive in the apocalyptic landscape populated by warring factions and escape genetic experiments. Mutants. 32 pages of awesomeness five in a five-issue series. So this is issue four out of a five-issue run. 
You can do the catch-up tier, get those three issues I just read and uh, reviewed for you. Check out Dirty Work at the Crossroads 4 on Kickstarter right now till December 15th. We are Scarlet, Scarlet Twilight, issues 1 and 2 are on Kickstarter right now. Issue 2 of a 4 issue comic inspired by Golden Age comic pulp and cyberpunk aesthetics. 22 pages of story. Captain Lancet wakes up to find himself in a distant future, dominated by his greatest enemy. We'll learn how he survived through the decades with the help of Maxi Matilda. Vam there's vampires in this, there's cloning, there's future stuff. So many ingredients to my favorite kind of comics, all in the same thing. Printed through Kablam. What more could you ask for? So check out We Are Scarlet Twilight 1 and 2 on Kickstarter right now until December 23rd. Nightmare, Nightmare Fuel, number one, from the team that brought you uh, Alex Automatic, which I will be reading soon. Nightmare Fuel, number one, monsters are real. When giant corporations try to turn them into money, what happens next is Nightmare Fuel. 28 pages of awesomeness. This will be a six-issue series when it's finally completed. Nightmare Fuel number one is on Kickstarter until December 24th. Saturn Effect Alpha is on Kickstarter right now. It is... Let's see, where am I? Two new action-packed sci-fi comics are in this Kickstarter right now. Saturn Effect Alpha number three and... Saturn Effect Helena, issue 1, is on Kickstarter right now. So it's 33 pages of Saturn Effect Alpha and 24 pages of Saturn Effect Helena. Plenty of preview pages on the Kickstarter page. They look so good, and as I showed you already, uh, the art style is very cool, very kinetic, very uh, Aeon Flux-ish. Check out Saturn Effect Alpha on Kickstarter until December 25th, Christmas Day. Zadar the Savage is on Kickstarter right now uh, from the team that brought you Berserker Solo Island and Lovecraft PI. Zadar the Savage brings vengeance to those who aim to, to destroy his life. Zadar, aka James Ravenwood, and his wife Rose live peacefully in the East African forests of 1917 on a secluded estate. Their quiet life is suddenly threatened by encroaching battles of World War I and a, land of mer a band of mercenaries led by rogue officer Sergeant Schneider, a single-minded hunter. So it's basically, it sounds like a Tarzan story. So, and he, to protect his ape family and fellow Englishmen and his true love, Zadar must unleash his savage nature. Zadar the Savage on Kickstarter right now till December 27th. I'm already back in it. It's, it looks awesome. I should check to see how, how much percentage it's at. Crossover Division 1 through 3 is on Kickstarter right now. Uh, this is a 32 page comic about the Shakespearean drama is slowly invading a small town. And Hank and Hector have to encounter the mysterious Betsy while trying to end this crossover. So, as you know, their crossover division is a group of people. They have to go and uh, stop fictional worlds from invading our real world. Crossover division is on Kickstarter until December 29th. How I slept my call. <laughs> How I slept my way through college. Number one is on Kickstarter right now, and other tales from freshman year. A young woman discovers that her college professor is running an escort service. A new thriller from the writer of White Ash and Glarian. This is for mature readers. 36 pages of awesomeness. Check out the preview pages. Really cool art. How I Slept My Way Through College, number one, on Kickstarter till December 30th. Tracker Collectibles. That's where you can go to get a Lillian figure. They also have other characters like, um, well, I don't know that the other ones. Gut Ghost is the only one I can think of. But I'm back in it to get the Lillian figure, which is still not unlocked. So unlock it so I can get the Lillian figure and comic book that comes with it. They are retro-inspired action figures, 1 18th uh, scale. 
of your favorite characters from top-selling Scout comics like White Ash and The Black Caravan. So check it out. I will have links to it in my Twitter, as usual. Tracker collectibles on Kickstarter till January 1st. The Majestic is on Kickstarter right now. It is from the same people who brought you Slightly ex Exaggerated and The Wild Cosmos, which are awesome books. A shape-shifting girl must help a young outcast boy return home in this gorgeous fantasy adventure about learning to love yourself. It is 80 pages of awesomeness, and uh, Majestic is on Kickstarter right now till January 4th. Sex, Spies, and Rock and Roll, you may, which you just saw in my mailbox, is on Kickstarter right now. A retro spy caper anthology book with multiple stories in it. Cold War espionage, 96 pages of awesomeness, all those stickers, all that coolness. Stories follow a group of spies in the ISF, International Foundation, International Security Foundation. So check out Sex, Spies, and Rock and Roll Anthology on Indiegogo right now. Dig Two Graves, the graphic novel, is on Indiegogo right now. After a brutal murder of her family, Miranda Stone is left with the desire for revenge. 80 pages of awesomeness, plus 4 pages of bonus material. This is for mature readers. Um, it's a very Punisher kind of style book. Her family dies and she goes out for revenge. I just watched a movie called Peppermint and uh, it had Jennifer Garner in it. Really cool stuff. It sounds a lot like this. So check out Dig Two Graves, the graphic novel on Indiegogo right now. 80 pages of awesomeness. Pretty cool stuff. So if you have a Kickstarter or Indiegogo campaign going right now, tell me about it and I will give you a shout out on the show. I will check it out. I might even end up backing you. Because um, one thing I'm really loving right now is independent comics. Uh, they're doing some really cool stuff. Many of my favorite comics are independent right now. White Ash, Miskatonic High, um, you name it. Sunstone and Bloodstain. I know, I know there's, those are in image comics, but I still feel like they're independent. And uh, a lot of cool stuff. A lot of things on Kickstarter I'm loving. And... I would love to know about yours, but you got to send me a link so I know about it. So if you're on the Twitters, throw your link on under, under the posting of this video, whatever. Send me a message. Send me an email at peterpanthevampire at yahoo.com. Either way, any way you can send me your Kickstarter or Indiegogo campaign is cool with me. And uh, I can't wait to see what you got. So, if you would like to uh, support this show, send... Uh, go to Red Narp Studios Comics on Patreon and uh, back me. And I, I will give you a shout out on the show. There's different levels of backing me. If you really, really like the show, you can you can back me for a dollar. If you super, super like the show, you can back me for five dollars, whatever. If you want to get some swag, some Peter Pan the Vampire comics, there are higher tiers also available for that. Every backer on Patreon will get a shout out where I will hold up a card so, I don't have any yet, but let's say Gary Brantner is back in my show, and so I will hold up a card with your social medias on it, and I will say, thank you, Gary Brantner, for backing me on Patreon. And so, yeah, as soon as I get other ones, that's the part where I'm going to throw your name out there. So, thank you for watching, and, uh, yeah, like I said, I just watched a movie called Peppermint. I am currently in the middle of watching uh, X-Men The Rogue Cut, which I just barely got for my birthday in November. And uh, yeah, I just barely finished uh, Lost in Space. That was super good. And uh, I'm watching Hawkeye with my kids. I have to wait. There's an episode that came out last Wednesday. It's today, it's Friday. And I can't watch it yet until probably Tuesday because that's the only time when I don't work and my daughters don't work. And it all, it's, uh, it's fun. So, Hopefully, I don't see any spoilers on the Twitters or Facebooks until then, and all that fun stuff. And thank you for watching Gary Brantner, Written Arb Studios Comics uh, on YouTube, and uh, thanks for watching this very long episode of uh, all the comics I've read, all the stuff I've got, hopefully. 
I can keep up with it better, but if not, I will just do a super mega lots of review show. I, I even have a whole folder of uh, comics that I've read and I haven't been able to review yet, but I had to get these ones out first because they have current Kickstarter campaigns going for them, and uh, it would be sad if I was if I missed it because there is one. Um, I'll just give them a shout out right now. Uh, Minx Cyberpunk. Uh, I just barely read it, and I meant to do a review before the uh, Kickstarter was over, which just barely ended, and uh, I was not able to give them a shout out. I feel really bad about it, but I did back it. I'm loving it, and hopefully I can do the review for the next show, and uh, give them shouts out, all that fun stuff. I think, uh, Mink Cyberpunk though, they do an Indiegogo campaign later, and uh, so I, I will do the review during that. It'll all work out, I'm sure. Either way, I'm getting my copy, I love it. Uh, Mink Cyberpunk, it's another one of, uh, she's a space bounty hunter, and uh, clones involved, all sorts of fun stuff, so yeah really enjoying that so thank you for watching gary brantner on youtube rent arb studios comics on youtube you can follow rent arb studios comics anywhere you see the, see this alien just google rent arb studios comics you will find me on facebook twitter a little bit on instagram you will find me on redbubble kickstarter as gary brantner of rent arb studios comics and uh yeah send me your links to your kickstarters that's my favorite thing in the world to see so, that's enough rambling for now. Thank you for watching.